Austin, good morning. And good morning. Is it okay with you if we record this session for educational purposes? Absolutely. Excellent, sir. Thank you. All right. So we spoke yesterday and about you coming off a uh, left femoral intertrochanteric fracture in your, or up around the hip. And uh, remind me, how long ago did that happen? That was March sometime? Yeah, March 14th. So two months ago, basically. Okay. Fracture two months ago, and that was a biking accident. Your front wheel went out from under you and you fell hard on your side. Yep. Yep. It's pretty painful. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. Now, how did you get out of that, by the way? Did you, were you able to limp off or did you just call 911? So uh, I was with my friend and I was able to get to the point where I could stand and the portion of the path we were on was wide enough and close enough to the road that he actually was able to drive his car right up to like five feet from where I was standing. I limped over to his car very painfully sat down and then the hospital was about three minutes away. So we just drove oh, right over there. Man. Well, if you're going to break your, if you're going to break your leg, I guess that's the way to do it. Right. Yeah. Everyone's been telling me uh, I chose the right time as well. Yes. Yeah. Right. All the hospitals are like, you know, 30% capacity. Yeah. Um, so then you, that, uh, I believe you said, was it one day later that you had the surgery to fixate that? Yep. So I broke, I, I fell and hurt myself on a Saturday. Sunday morning was the surgery. Okay. And you've got some hardware in there and you, um, you sent me some, some x-rays of that, which show it very well. Now, let me ask you, are you able to feel around on your own hip and thigh and, and feel any of that hardware? Like do any of the screws stick out or do, like if you lay on that side, does it bother you to lay on that side in bed? Uh, it's definitely getting easier to lay on that side. I don't think I can feel it. Um, I don't, definitely don't feel anything that's like a bump, like a, yeah. like a bump or anything like that. But what I do feel occasionally, um, like for example, if I'm rolling or sliding, I guess, um, I sometimes feel like the, like the muscle of my leg kind of like flips over something. Yeah, like, exactly, like kind of flips over the hardware in a weird yeah, way. And that's almost, and what you're describing and sensing is almost certainly exactly what's happening in there. Because um, that can happen even without surgical hardware in there because you've got a trochanter, which is the, the bone that sticks out kind of like if you were to hip check someone to the side. Yeah. Um, that bone that you would contact with. Um, the IT band can flip over it. It's a little bony prominence in the tendon. It's like a rope flipping over something that's sticking out there. Yeah, and now that protrudes more because of the hardware, so it makes sense. It's a weird feeling. I'm not a fan, but you know. Now, is it painful when that happens? No, it's just it's just odd. Okay. All right. And you've done some self rehab on your own, pretty remarkably uh, progressing so far. Can you go over that, what you've done? I think it was some lateral hip raises that you were doing laying on your side. So it, it started, um, you know, immediately after with just um, a series of exercises that I would do laying down in my bed. So just um, lifting my legs, doing a uh, sliding, like sliding my heel towards my butt. While you're um, on your back. Yeah, while I'm on my back, up and down, uh, lifting my leg, uh, going out to the keeping my legs straight and going out to the side while lying on my back. Mm -hmm. And then um, some, some stretches like ankle, ankle flexes, uh, like pulling them and pointing them. Um, and then that evolved into the standing um, side leg raises, which at first I could only, you know, go about a foot away from my body center. And I eventually worked up and uh, my, my girlfriend, Emily, helped, you know, at the beginning she was helped, she was holding my leg and helping me lift it and everything. And uh, eventually I was able to do that all on my own, under my own power. And uh, after time I was able to, you know, get my leg like almost parallel with the ground when bringing it up to the side. And uh, like I said, I worked up to what, my surgeon told me, he said, a benchmark for people with this type of injury is if they can do three sets of 100 in a day. Um, and I worked up to that over a six week period. If they can hit that, then they can walk without a limp. And I'm pretty much walking without a limp. 
Fantastic. Did you say you've been on the bike or you've done any hiking or extended walking? No bicycling. Um, I, I think that the, I think that the push from that compressed position that bicycling, bicycling uh, requires would not be easy. Um, but I have done hiking, um, you know, with, with some incline uh, in the range of like one to three miles generally. Okay. And, and you handle that with no big setbacks afterwards? Uh, no, there, you know, there's, yeah, no, no major soreness. There's the occasional, you know, trip on a route and kind of land with a bit of extra force on the, on the bad leg, but um, it does not, it does not cause extended discomfort. Fantastic. What would you say your pain levels are at worst, say over the last week? Would you say mild, moderate, or severe at worst? I would say pretty mild. The, usually the only pain I feel these days is when I sit on the couch in like a, an awkward position, maybe with uh, my leg sort of like my knee falling out like that uh, if I sit like that for you know 30 minutes an hour when I stand up it's all it's all sore and awkward and I limp for a few steps until uh, everything kind of normalizes so if and that would be like if you were sitting with your knees bent feet flat kind of knees pulled toward chest and you let one knee fall to the side yep so that would be hip external rotation you call yeah it. yeah uh, and that's that's one thing that uh, I guess I would also highlight is that if I'm if I try to sit, you know, uh, Indian style, pretzel style, whatever you want to call it, that's pretty uncomfortable. And I would definitely uh, another goal would be to get that ability back if possible. In fact, that's the very next thing I was going to ask you. Um, what are the activities you'd like that you can't do now or haven't attempted yet that you would like to be able to resume doing comfortably? Yeah, always rock climbing, um, you know, mountain biking. Um, just, I mean, re really any activity that, you know, I do a lot of different different stuff. I go caving, uh, a major thing uh, in caving, that's, that's something I've picked up since I've gotten to Tennessee is, you know, they're caves, they're not always big. So you have to do a lot of crouch walking. Uh -huh. And I find crouch walking to be pretty difficult right now. It's, you know, maintaining... A bent over position with your knee half bent and you know walking along under a low ceiling uh, now when you've attempted that or the to the degree you've attempted it lately is it most that you said it's uncomfortable would you say that is is pain or it's just uh the, the hip doesn't seem or leg doesn't seem to move well enough to get you into that into that crouch and able to physically do that thing i would say that it's weakness um with a a little bit of pain underneath okay a little pain. It, it's uh it's you know i'm in the position i'm in in a crouched walking position and i can feel that the muscle isn't ready to support that movement and that and then my brain sort of predicts a falter yeah. uh and i try to you know and then i like wobble my body all over the place in order to try to compensate Um, and how is sleep for you? Sleep okay? Yeah, it's fine. It's uh, it's no no different, not significantly different than it was before. Okay, good. Um, and you and I, I believe, we talked when we met a couple of years ago. Was it for your low back? Low back yeah. issue? Okay. How's your low back been? <laughs> uh, it's it's pretty interesting actually. The exercises that I was doing, uh, I've sort of backed off of some of them a little bit just because I got bored of them, I guess. But uh, <laughs> uh, some of them, like the, the ones laying in the bed uh, and lifting my leg and moving it around, doing those three times a day like I was doing, uh, was really doing a lot of, positively for my back as well. Um, everything was going really well until you know, I, I had a lot of guilt around making my girlfriend do all these things for me. And one day I was hopping, I got to a stage where I was hopping a lot um, on one leg and I was hopping with my laundry basket and holding that weight in front of me and hopping on one leg uh, caused my, my back to go out. Okay. And that was pretty painful because one of the best ways to, you know, 
let a back that has gone out heal is to just walk. And I was unable to walk. So that was difficult, but everything is back to uh, baseline now, which is, which as of late has been pretty good. Okay, nice. Yeah. Baseline now, pretty good. So um, we're going to check, we'll go straight into exam. So essentially, I'm going to be, we're, you and I are going to be looking for two things. We're going to looking, be looking for mobility problems, which is how well you move, how, all, how well all of your parts move, well, especially from the waist down, mm -hmm. and make sure they have enough range of motion to do the things you want to do safely. And stability, which is, how, with, which is where your strength deficits are. So essentially, if you think of our bodies as a chain of moving parts, um, each part has a normal range it should be able to move through. Yeah. And if it can, it can move safely. And if it cannot, by definition, it's being forced to move unsafely, which just means injury or pain is more likely to happen. Also, all the muscles that attach around our joints are where the protection comes from. So basically, the stronger you are around your hips and knee and thigh and, and core, the stronger you are, the harder you are to injure. So we'll be looking for those two things. And to check out the mobility stuff, it's all going to be stretches. Well, it's going to be mostly stretches. We'll also check foam rolling as well. Do you sure, have sure. a foam roller? Yeah. Fantastic. How about a lacrosse ball or a baseball or a softball? Yeah, I've got a number of little rolly balls. Fantastic. Because those, those will be your massage tools. We'll see if you need those as well. So the first thing we're going to try, let me just look back in your notes and see if we have talked about this before. Oh, we've talked about your, we looked at your shoulder too. Hmm, yeah, the, uh, I actually recently, finally, I was using the bands in my gym and I finally was like, okay, especially now that it's pandemic and I can't get to the gym, I ordered a band online and I've been doing the, the pull and the that and it's, you know, everything's in good condition. Fantastic. Have you tried that doorway hamstring stretch in a while that we talked about back two years ago? Yeah, I'm still doing that daily. Are you able to get to 90 degrees easily on both sides? Yeah, and my uh, so I have I have chosen to try to push that to a next level per se because I can get to ninety degrees uh, on both sides. Okay. And what I have started doing is I've scooted my butt back from the wall a little bit and put both legs up simultaneously with my knees bent, and okay. then as I breathe deeply, I slowly push my, my heels up the wall till yeah. I can get to. Um, straight and so that's I'm sort of trying to take that to so I'll I'll advise making a change there okay so the change being only stretch one leg at a time and, and yeah. here's why um, if you had both legs up on the wall is that what you're describing yep the problem is is that when you when you raise both legs it tucks it tucks your tail under your it'll basically flatten your low back it becomes uh, more of a low, at least partly a low back stretch. Yeah. Like in the slump direction, as opposed to if you left one leg down and the other leg up, the down leg is going to keep your pelvis from rocking backwards and yeah. therefore apply all the stretch to the up leg, which is, which is how you'd get a better stretch. Um, having said that, if you, if you are able to easily lay in a doorway and get to 90, yeah. So like that's the case? Yep. Okay, on both sides? Then that means that's our minimum requirement for flexibility. 90 degrees should feel easy to do on both sides. You can get some additional range, and I'll, I'll give you a stretch for that. In fact, it's a much shorter stretch. It's the one I use. Great. For my strengths, uh, and it is called a waiter's bow stretch, and it only takes two minutes and is done standing. Great. So it'll be considerate an upgrade for the previous one. You don't have to do them both. Do the the shorter, easier one that gets you further. Um, all right, so let's check, let's check hip mobility itself. I'm gonna bring you down on the floor with me, and if you can, get you down on the floor as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll have your left thigh on its side. If you're able to. Left thigh 
Yes, and then that back leg just tucks back behind you if you can. So that's actually pretty painful to okay. to sit. Like I don't know the just the the point specifically where my hip makes contact with the ground is oh, definitely okay. now uncomfortable. Would you say mild, moderate, or severe pain? Um, I would say in the in the in the moderate range moderate range so we'll so we'll ease into this and we'll just see how much of it you can handle yeah so the direction of the stretch we're going to try first is chest over knee and try to keep your back straight as you hinge forward and go slow and you can support yourself with your arms and let's see how far oh, you look a little tight there now is this hurting more and more the further you go down in that spot no. Good. In fact, that might it might hurt less because that that spot that on your hip that was hurting is less has less contact on the ground the further you go. Yeah. Awesome. Now you can tweak this stretch by swinging your torso off to your right a uh, Yeah, your right a little. Now see how that targets a slightly different spot. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you can t basically hunt for the torso position that gives you the biggest, most intense feeling of stretch. And then we're gonna have, I'm gonna have you do a one minute stretch in that position, hinging forward as aggressively as you can handle for one minute. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get a clock and we'll, we'll set a timer for you. All right. All right, timer is running. So the purpose while you're doing this, um, the right intensity for a stretch, the way I describe it, is the stretch should be barely tolerable. <laughs> yeah. Barely tolerable means you can last the whole clock, but you're kind of miserable the whole time. Now, having said that, remember, you are always in charge of how much it hurts. So if it is ever unbearable, don't bail on the stretch, just ease off a little. Sure. And I'm going to email all these things we're talking about to you, by the way, and there will be video clips that show you how to do all these things. So you don't have to memorize any of this. This stretch, you can do two or three times a day. Every day you do it, you should find I can hinge further and further forward. And as long as that is the case, you are, you are using it correctly. And once it feels pretty easy to hinge forward, you know, pretty far, good. Nice, and let's try switching that up just for fun, just to see what the other side looks like. How are you holding up so far? Doing all right. Good. Yeah, it's, and, and what you're experiencing there, here, here's something else that may happen, by the way. When you have that left leg back behind you, you may yep. get pinching pain in here. Okay. If you get that, that's just a cramp from those hip muscles being tight. But Let's that, see what happens. Yeah. Oh, this side's pretty tight too. Good. Although you are hinging further forward on this side over knee than you were on the left. Now try swinging torso off to your left a bit. Yeah, so that looks like it's a little tight too. So we'll set you a clock as well. Your, your one minute timer is running. So do I, uh, I'm feeling this on, at least on this side, um, way more in my hamstring. Uh, no, I would say in my back. A low back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Low and side. So here's what I'll tell you about stretches. The short answer is it kind of doesn't matter where you feel the stretch happening. Yeah. Um, all that that means, if you feel it in your back, for example, on this side, it just means that that is the tightest muscle involved in this movement you're trying to do. That's all it means. Right. And we want all of them, whether they're hip or wherever, we want all the muscles loose enough, elastic enough to be able to go through a nice big range comfortably. So the, uh, you're, as long as you have good form on your stretches, which you do, you're doing it correctly. Even if it, it will probably feel different from side to side, you may feel the stretch happening in different places. That's all fine. Yeah. All right. Good. So let's get you up again. And I can see that you're pretty tight. Uh, 
in that side just because it was hard. We we're kind of leaning off to one side. It was hard to sit upright in that stretch. Sure. Which is, again, just a sign that you need it, that you can benefit from it. Uh, let's also try a standing quad stretch as well. Okay. You've done this one before. It's just seeing if you can grab your heel. Yeah, so I, um, when I was, even when I was uh, right in the very beginning of my process, yep. I was actually doing this stretch uh, laying down. Awesome. So I've been, I've been working this, and this was very, it was very, very difficult at first to, to even get, you know, I, I think I was starting out and I was using a strap, you know, to hold my leg. Yeah. Um, and I think I was starting out like somewhere around here. Yeah. So I worked my way back up. So this is, this has been in a good place. You've been doing fantastic. Now, by the way, um, normal range of motion. So you can check yourself going forward for life. Normal range of motion is I can sink heel into buttock. It feels easy to do when my thigh and torso are straight. Right. As opposed to leaning forward at the waist, which will make it less stretch. And as opposed to raising that knee, which will also make it less, less stretch. So, yeah. And once you can do that and it feels relatively easy to do on both sides, that means you have perfect flexibility there. And that means you don't have to do that stretch every day. Cool. So with all these stretches, it's also a great balance challenge, isn't it? You gave me. Yeah. Well, I, also, I, I just cramped up a little bit in the. <laughs> yes. Your hamstring. Yeah. Just getting your foot can give you trying to grab it. Yeah. Give you the hamstring cramp for a second. All right. That looks really good too. So again, a little fret refresher on stretches. They have one purpose that is to restore range of motion when it's lacking. And once you get range of motion back to normal, you don't have to do the stretch every day, but you do have to check it every once in a while because those muscles will shrink up shorter. Yeah. So basically, um, Muscles are, all of our muscles are shrink to fit. So if we don't regularly take the muscle to its full length, our body will resize it to the length it's spending the most time in. And doing the stretch will tell you if you need to do the stretch. Yep. And uh, with, with everything that's been going on with the pandemic, for, I think for a lot of us, spend the most time in is couch time these days. So yep. it's hard to, uh, time and then, yeah, whether it's on hard to get out. Netflix, whatever. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me give you a chance to grab your foam roller. If it's yep. not handy. And we'll go over that as well. So I'm, uh, I'm really, yeah, your, your down leg will be straight. And the starting point is right under that bone at the very top of your waistband. Yep. And you're going to, uh, I'm curious to see if this irritates your hardware at all. Because yeah. that is. <laughs> I have been avoiding this because I'm really unsure how it's going to feel. So we'll go really slow. Sure. Um, and understand that this may hurt. In fact, I'm kind of expecting you to find painful spots along this path of the IT band, uh, regardless, just because you haven't been able to use your hip much and it's tightened up. But let's go really slow and just kind of walk your way. All now, are my, are my hips, uh, what's the angle that I'm going for? You want hips stacked on top of each other vertically. Okay. Um, so if, I don't know if you can see my foot. See how my foot is just flat on the floor? Yeah. So meaning I'm not rocked back this way and I'm not racked, rocked forward. I'm purely on the outside of the hip and thigh. So just a, a question here because I know your previous advice to me was hips at a 45 uh, to, the, to the roller. Oh, no, no. Um, I would say 90 degree. Okay. I would say 90 for IT band. 
Now, right. you find, yeah, you can use this massage tool on other spots. You yeah. Know, quad, which is on the front, or you yeah. could do a 45, which might give you kind of the front and a little bit of the outside of the yeah. quad. But in this test, we're just going to check pure lateral part. So, so maybe it. 90 degrees. And then try walking your way along. See if you can get all the way to the knee. Oh, you're through the worst of it. Good. All the little further to right there. And then all the way back to waistband. Looking great. Oh yeah, that's. Oh, is that where your hardware is? Yeah, and it's it's where the scar is too, and the area around the scar is all still pretty tender. So try try two more passes just like that if you can handle it. Sure. So the the incision site where your your uh, surgery was done. I would expect that to be painful to roll over as well because of the scar tissue. So basically scar tissue hurts to roll over. That's true. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, but massage is what breaks scar tissue up so that you get yeah. elastic tissue in there, which is what we want. We want things more pliable and flexible. Now, is it painful the entire route from hip to knee, or is it mostly the top half, bottom half, middle? It's mostly the top half. Okay. So you've probably been going a minute. I'm going to give you another minute clock, which is running right now. Spend the rest of this clock rolling just the painful spots you found, which may be, it sounds like, the top half of that section. And by the way, you cannot injure yourself doing this, even though it can be pretty painful. Good. So the rule with massage, and by the way, that is what you're doing. You're doing self-massage. The roller is the tool that's applying the massage. The rule with my, my rule for massage is where it hurts to do it is where you need it. Yep. Lucky you. <laughs> Man, if I'd, if I'd done this, uh, I could just feel... If I'd done this like before my scar was as closed up as it is, it would have just popped right open. Oh, I'm sure it would have. <laughs> yes. So you're now what, two months out? Yep. Yeah. So two months out means, oh, you finished your clock. Excellent. Good. How are you doing so far? Doing okay. <laughs> um, and then grab, if you have one handy, I've got a softball here but a lacrosse ball, any small hard ball. Yeah, you're ready. Now, let's check. So we're gonna use this as a massage tool around the hip itself. Yep. We're gonna try it just because it's a smaller tool and it will fit in those little nooks and crannies better than the big foam roller will. Foam roller is great, but it for big exposed areas of muscle and tissue, but around the hip, there's lots of little tiny spots that that, that won't reach into, but this will. I wish yeah. I could get something that's the exact same size and hardness as a softball without the stitching. Oh, yeah. That would be a really nice thing to have. Um, yeah, I guess you, maybe a croquet ball. That would be really hard. That would be pretty hard. Yeah. All right, I'm going to slide my yoga mat over here. I was just about to suggest that. So, to do massage hip, so actually, I'll have you start on your side facing me. Okay, which, and I'm going for my other hip, so I'll swing around. And, and on all these, you'll always check left and right, but since yeah. we know left is the sketchy one. And then you'll raise up and just kind of wedge that ball right under waistband. Okay, good. Then a little forward. A little back and try getting and I know you can't see me very well but try getting on the very outside of the hip explore there try a little up and down so there's no magic to this this is just exploring for spots 
And it sounds like you're finding some. Yep. Oh, wow. And if it's too painful to do this way, a lacrosse ball might be a little nicer. Yeah. Just because it won't penetrate as deeply into that tissue. So you're, you're just kind of exploring. And uh, again, there's no magic to it. You're just kind of looking around, hitting all the spots. And since you found some, great. Now let's move on to what you were doing before, which is the backside of your backside, which will start in a bridge. Raise up, place the ball right underneath, again, the pelvis, the very top of like the top of waistband, just under that. And try a little rock, like swinging hips side to side, left to right. Again, you're just kind of looking for a painful spots, spots that hurt to roll over. Anything interesting in there? Yeah, I'm sitting on one now. And it's generally better to move across an area than to park on it. Okay. Also, once you get over, get the ball over close to tailbone. And then if you can peek over at me, do a little up and down right next to tailbone. Again, this is very awkward, but very effective. And I don't really, that, that, that whole area feels just fine. Okay. So that suggests you don't need it in that spot. All okay. right. So my rule for massage, is once you've mapped out where the painful spots are, spend about two, maybe three minutes rolling those spots. So, and I'll say an area would be hip, would be one area. Mm -hmm. IT band would be an area, quad would be an area. So you can explore all those things with your massage tools. Once you've mapped out painful spots, spend about two minutes on those spots, just beating them up and then move on to the next one and so on. And it, the key is only do this every two to three days. So not daily. Got it. The reason not daily is because you're intentionally bruising yourself a little bit with your massage, which is good because you're fixing a problem, but you're gonna want the bruising to calm down before the next session. Otherwise it'll just be a permanent bruise that never goes away and never feels any better to roll over. But if you do this every two to three days, you'll find it hurts less to roll those spots as, as sessions go by. In fact, that's the proof you're fixing that problem. And then once you get to the point where it's like, eh, I, can, I can roll all this, doesn't really hurt that bad, you fix that problem. You don't have to keep doing it every three. But just like stretching, check it every once in a while. Sure. Some classes. Just say, oh, see if any new sore spots have popped up. And if you do find some, roll them every three days until they go away and so on. So basically, these are the test to see if you have a problem and they are the fix for that problem if you have it. Got it. Again, just like stretches, stretches act in the same way. Now, let's try some exercise. Um, I'm going to show you one called a sweeper. Okay. That you might you may have outgrown, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to scoot you a little closer. And it uses a slider. This has got a hard plastic side and a soft foam side. This is a furniture slider. Yeah. Use you familiar with these? You can get them at Home Depot, Amazon, Bed Bath & Beyond. They make really small ones. I like the bigger ones. They come in a four pack usually. But it's a great rehab tool. And you'll use it on carpet. And I see you have wood floors, but maybe if you had a rug or something, that anything that will slide easily over the floor you're on will work. So on wood floors, you might use just like a, a washcloth. Yeah. It'll slip easily. So the sweeper,
see if you can see this. You'll start with a slider under your right toe and put a little bend in this left, left knee. And you're gonna keep the same bend in this knee as you trace a half circle around this planted foot. And as you can see, I'm doing an air sweeper right now. So the air sweeper, meaning my right toe is not touching the floor at all, is actually tougher than with a slider. I'll start trying that because I don't, I don't have a slider, slidey yeah. thing on hand. So let's see, let me try if, to. If you're in socks on your wood floor, that would probably even work fine too. i to make sure. And you only have to go to midline in front and back. The other thing I'll tell you is make sure that your belly button is always pointing forward and not aiming out to your side. So if you take a peek at me, so when you get back here, rather than swiveling this way, sure. and your foot pointing out, keep your, let's see if I can show you that stay on your toe when you get behind you. That way it keeps your belly button pointing forward and it makes sure there's not twist happening. Yes, that's way better. That way it doesn't create any twist at that knee. Sure. And if you want to make the, the workout bigger, sit down a little lower with your butt. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's where it's definitely hard on my left leg. Like right here, that's like it's really – working a lot okay it's working a lot is it is it hugely painful it's it's on the verge of being pretty painful okay so here here's my rules for this exercise i think this is going to be a great one for you and i say just do the air the air sweeper sure right now so on this exercise it's two sets and each set ends when you reach we'll say a decent muscle burn somewhere doesn't matter where it could be up around the hip, it could be around the thigh or the calf, doesn't matter where it is, but you reach a, a decent muscle burn, catch your breath completely, then do the other side, and then uh, catch your breath again and do two more set or one more set on each leg again. Sure. And um, as sessions of this go by, your goal is to end up like if I've got a shallow knee bend here on my left leg, as, t as workouts go by, sit lower and lower. So this yep. will help with your crouch walking as well, as well as your stability. So balance is learnable. And the way you improve it is by spending more time in a wobbly situation like that. Yep. Body gets better at it like anything else. Better balance translates to better support and protection for all your joints. So in addition to strengthening, which it definitely will do, it's also providing added layers of protection to your hip and knee and foot and ankle. And that's a good one to do uh, daily? Uh, I wouldn't, you, you know, you might, you can probably do that one daily just because it's not super strenuous. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put all this in your inbox too. Um, and, and again, as time goes by, you should look for, I can get my butt lower. I can pick up a few reps in each set. And at some point it'll just start feeling easy. And that means you've outgrown it and will give you bigger challenges. Awesome. Um, do you have a big Swiss ball? No. Okay. Um, that's going to be a worthwhile investment. I'll demo, um, a a couple variations on squats okay i think it'll help you a lot again you won't be able to see super well but when i show that when i send you the video in your inbox you'll be able to see better so this is a 55 centimeter ball okay it's smaller than most you'll see a lot of them are just gigantic you don't need the huge one this one's plenty big to do everything you need to do so you'll put the ball behind you. It'll fit right into the into your low back. 
feet about shoulder width. And then you're gonna do a test squat. And the test squat is to, to make sure we get your foot placement in the right place. So basically my target depth is I can get thighs parallel to the floor. And I want my feet positioned to where my knees and toes are in the same plane. As opposed to, I know it's hard to see, as opposed to knees way out in front of toes. Sure. And also as opposed to toes way out in front of knees. Yeah. So once you find your stance, okay, team knees and toes, good. Then you're gonna spend six seconds getting to thighs parallel. So really, it's think of it as falling as slowly as you can. And it'll look like this, down, two, three, four, five, six, right back up, pushing mostly through your heels. Sure. And repeat, two, three, four, five, six, right back up. And the pushing through your heels forces you to use glutes. Pushing through heels uses glutes more. Pushing through toes uses quads more. We want both, but glutes are huge hip savers. They're one of the most powerful muscles in your body. Okay. And the stronger they are, again, the better able they are to protect you. Um, I wonder and, if, if that is an exercise I could do, if I could substitute the foam roller for the ball. Maybe. It's perhaps. The only problem I might foresee is that it won't, because it's only this far away from the wall, it may not let you hinge forward at the waist as much as you need to. So good squat, it'll feel like your butt's way out behind you. Yeah. Um, to get knees over toes. If, if I can't get my butt that far back because the roller is too close to the wall, you'll end up with knees over toes. So I've been doing some squats. So let's, let, let me, I yeah, just wanna see if I, how I can do just normal. So I'm gonna try it going slow here because yeah. that's definitely the key. Oh, that looks really good, yeah. If you feel like you're about to fall over backwards, you're, you're probably doing it right. Oh, that looks beautiful. Good. So you can do that version. Do cool. that version. But just like we said, super slow on the down, return at normal speed, pushing mostly through your heels. Yeah. And that's works. like, there's definitely a lot of like a, you know, feeling of tightness and some pain, but it's not unbearable. Yes. And, and my pain rules for all these exercises are you're allowed to have pain, but the question is how much you have. Yeah. Unless you're having severe pain, three reps in a row, it's severe, it's severe, it's severe. Unless that's happening, keep going. You cannot harm yourself. And if you do ever have severe pain, three reps in a row, don't stop the exercise. We're just going to modify the way you're doing it just enough to where it's not severe. Sure. So, for example, that might be instead of going thighs parallel, maybe I shorten it just a bit. So my range isn't quite as deep because usually most of the pain will be at the bottom yeah. of the squat. Yep. And then you, you work out within that slightly modified range. So that way you get the benefit of the exercise without the, the extra pain. And I'll predict session over session, you can get your butt a little lower, a little lower, a little lower yeah. if you follow that. Now the next one is a hamstring curl, which you will need a ball for. Yeah. <laughs> If you have a, a rolling office chair, you might be able to use that. I do. do, perfect. So I'll show you what that looks like. So. To do this, you'll start on your back. The feet on the ball, or back of your ankles on the ball. Use your arms for balance, or I use my elbows, and then raise up 
to plank and then keeping your hips at this height, pull in as far as you can, pause, straighten all the way out, pause. Cool. Pause, pause. And that is a pretty big workout. It's great for, this is good for all kinds of things. For low back, for glutes, for hamstrings, you'll even feel it in your calves. And again, that's two sets of that, of, of that. and each set ends when you kind of can't do anymore. Meaning, I can't pull my legs all the way in because it's too, I'm too tired, or my butt starts sagging. Sure. So one set to failure, catch your breath completely, one more set. And the reason for the break in between is it lets you, uh, it lets you recover a bit and you're fresher for your next set and you'll get more out of it. Okay. Got it. Any, any other, any questions so far about all this stuff? No, I think I'm good so far. Um, and I definitely, yeah. Uh, so the really excited about the, the, what do you, what do you call the forward fold over the knee? Oh yes, yes, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Forgot all about that. Oh, oh, you're talking about the hip stretch. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was talking about the hip stretch, but you, you're talking about the, uh, the waiter. Yes. The waiter's bow. Yeah. So to do this one, um, you'll start standing and kind of just feet comfortable width and keeping knees locked, you'll hinge forward at the waist like this. So when you say locked, yeah. is that is that like back? Yes, locked back. Okay. Hinge forward at the waist. Feel your hammies? Uh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and give yourself, this one is, is got a lot of things to keep track of. This is a two minute stretch. It's a long stretch. Give yourself as much hinging forward stretch while keeping knees locked. It may help to engage your quads as you're doing this to help keep them locked. And one of the, the limiting factors here may just be that your low back tires out from trying to keep itself straight. Yeah. Right? Um, and the reason for back straight is because it takes your low back out of the stretch and applies the stretch just to the hammies. You'll feel it in your calf as well. Right. Where we want it. And this one, because there's not a wall to stop you, you can, you can get beyond 90 degrees in hip flexion. So it's um two minutes now once you get to a minute and a half of that stretch because your low back will be tight and tired then for the last 30 seconds i just round all the way forward and just do a typical toe touch okay um which will loosen up some of that tightness in your low back so it's hinging 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 for a minute and a half then it's rounding forward like this and trying to touch the floor between your feet, which will apply the stretch more to lower back. My personal goal for um, uh, to make sure my range of motion is where I want it to be is that I can put my knuckles flat between my feet, and it feels sure. easy to do when my knees are locked. Does that make sense? Yeah, sounds good. So. You may not be able to do that yet, but you'll find if you do this stretch, say, once or twice a day, it won't be but a couple of days until you can do that. Knuckles flat between your feet. Yeah. And once that feels easy to do, then I just touch up that stretch for life. So six months from now, if you're wondering, do I need to do that stretch? Try it. Can you put your knuckles flat easily between your feet? If so, don't need it. If not, do it daily until you can. And then touch up for life again. Perfect. All right, I'm glad I, I had forgotten about that one. And that's a much shorter stretch. It's much uh, easier to do and, you know. Save me a little time. <laughs> that? Said so it will save me a little time. Absolutely. And you don't have to lay on the floor for it, you know. So the laying on the floor bit can be a hassle. You can't necessarily do that everywhere. Yeah.
So I'm going to put together your email here. Um, also, I'm going to recommend you get at least three liters of water a day. Oh yeah. So that's, um, I, that's just, I don't know. I've tried it. I've yeah. tried going up to right three of these things and it's just in and out of the bathroom. It's too much. Okay. Uh, I've two has felt good for me, right? I feel, I feel like I'm consuming a lot of water. I feel, you know, good. I feel hydrated, but I'm not just running in out of the bathroom nonstop. Okay. Can I ask how much you weigh? 160 and okay. I'm six, two. Okay. So here's two things I'll tell you. Yeah. As long as another good metric is if my urine is, is roughly champagne colored most of the time, most of the time, yeah. you're hydrated. You're yeah. hydrated. Um, it'll probably be that's darkest in the morning. Yep. Because you haven't had any water all day. Also, if you take uh, multivitamins, uh, some B vitamins can make your, your urine kind of neon yellow looking. That does not mean you're dehydrated. It's just your right. riboflavin that'll do that. So whatever amount of water you need to keep that, you know, champagne colored urine. And the uh, second thing is right now you're kind of less active than you want to be. As you become more active, your water needs do go up because you're burning faster. So, so you'll find that in order to maintain that level of hydration, you will be having to add some and you probably won't have to visit the restroom as often. Just again, because you're cycling through it, you're sweating it, you're breathing it out in your uh, as you exhale. So, um, yeah, and I've, I've absolutely seen that. Right. So that's, uh, the, the three liters on like an office day, right. Where I'm just sitting in an air conditioned space way too much, but a day out in the sun, rock climbing three liters. I want to probably have more than three liters. I would, I would okay. think. Perfect. In my experience. Awesome. Waiters, baths. It sounds like you're all over that. Also, you're cleared to do literally any activity you want to do as long as that activity does not give you a ton of extra pain afterwards for a day or more. Yeah. And of course you can't know until afterwards whether that's gonna happen, right? And then it's too late. Yeah. So therefore, any new thing you wanna try, rock climbing or caving, right? Biking, any new thing you wanna try, the first two sessions you do that thing, make it ridiculously easy version of that thing. Yeah. Ridiculously easy means slow movement. Slow is safe. It's hard to hurt yourself in slow motion. It also means no straining or struggling. So just dial it way down. Think of it as a walkthrough of that activity the first time. So with rock climbing, maybe you, you boulder, do some easy bouldering for 10, 15 minutes. That's your first day and then you're done. Sure. But if you do this, ridiculously easy first few times. What you guarantee is that number one, you cannot injure yourself. And number two, you've get, you found a safe entry point into that activity that you can then add intensity to in future sessions as your body adapts to it by getting stronger. Yeah. Okay. So we're giving you the hip stretch, the waiter's bow. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and send you a calf stretch as well. We didn't check those today, but it's easy to do. Um, and then sweeper, and for you, we'll start with the air sweeper, which you understand. And then also eccentric wall squat, which you're gonna do without a ball, which is great. Your form look fantastic. And a hamstring curl. And then we'll also send you foam rolling guidelines. Great. And here's what I'm gonna propose. Um, check in with me by email in about one week-ish, I mean, roughly next Friday, next weekend, and give me a status. What's your status? Is it better, is it worse, or is it about the same? Yeah. Or check in with me sooner by email if something interesting happens or if you have questions. Got it. But, uh, I did have one additional question yeah. uh, that I wanted. So I think at, at one point you would, you'd get, I had, um, there was a word for it that you used that I can't remember what I tweaked my neck and you had a good word, good medical term for the tweak. Ah, torticollis. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, you gave me some instructions on like, uh, you know, you're going to feel pain, but turn your head to the side and breathe. And, uh, but you also did a really great 
um, massage where it was like pressure. You applied pressure and I like moved my arm across my body. Yes. Uh, and I was wondering if you could revisit that uh, and I can then tell my girlfriend how to do it. Yes. And you can actually probably do that yourself with a ball. Great. Again, you won't be able to see this, but I think you'll get the idea. So basically, you'll, um, I'll say, I like to sit on the ball with my butt. Yeah. Feet forward a bit. And then kind of feed the ball down in between shoulder blades until it feels like, oh, yeah, there's a good spot. And then pull your, you, you push back into the wall and pull your arm across your body like this. So you, basically, and I'm, I'm kind of, it's hard to see, but I'm kind of moving around to different little spots and I'm yeah. looking for painful spots. So this is how you can do myofascial release to yourself. Um, and I don't have a video showing a partner how to do it, but that would be very helpful. Show her from behind. She would just press, she would kind of wrap over around the front and just press in there and then you would do that action sure yeah i would love i would love just like uh because i'm sure there maybe there's one or two more good ones for the neck and upper shoulder area yep. a, a little video that shows a, a mix of those would be fantastic i'm gonna see if i can shoot some of those this weekend and then i'll get those to you for sure thanks yeah and and on this cell it's called myofascial release and the pr the premise is pin the muscle down and then and then drag it back and forth underneath that pressure point, which yeah. just strips it out, breaks up scar tissue, loosens tight things. And it's just a version of massage. So the same rules apply. We're, explore around where the painful spots are or where you need it the most. And I'll say like maybe 20 passes sure. every couple of days. And it should hurt less to do in those spots as days go by. I'm also going to send you a trap stretch so this is your trap it runs mm -hmm. from ear to shoulder and uh do you have on your chair you're sitting on do you have a seat bottom you can grab yourself yeah like on one side so i'm grabbing my seat bottom and then lean away at the waist and let your shoulder go slack like you're trying to pull it out of its socket and then slowly tip your head away see how you can give yourself a stretch Sure. Now, if you slowly lower your chin, see how that gets a different spot? Yeah. And if you slowly tip your head back, how that gets a different spot? So whatever head position gives you the biggest feeling of stretch, hold that position for one whole minute. And again, you can do it two or three times a day. If sure. nothing else, at least let pain be your reminder. Yeah. You won't forget that. Yeah, I'll put that in your note too here. So that's a trap stretch. And a hip stretch and trap stretch. Any other questions about any of this stuff? Awesome. I, oh, uh, yeah. The, so the one question that has been, you know, I've been wondering a lot, right, is that I worked up to, I worked up to a lot, a lot of doing, uh, doing these, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And um, I was just wondering, you know, I'm walking and I'm going on hikes. Do you think that's something that I need to continue doing in bulk? No. And here's why. You've outgrown those. Yeah. So if you think of exercise, if we look at all the exercises in the world, some are really easy and some are really challenging, right? So I, I say there's a continuum on which all exercises fall. And the ones you're describing, you know, like the leg raises and the heel slides and those things, those are on the lower end of that spectrum. Now they have a usefulness because many times, as in your case, they're the only thing you can do, right? Right. So they're, they're hugely useful, but you outgrow their usefulness pretty quickly as your, your function increases. So then you replace them with more challenging things along that path. And the more challenging exercise you do, the bigger the payoff. You have more protection. You have more support. Your muscles are better trained and more familiar with how to protect you. So it's not bad to do them. 
it's just there's limited return. And, and I feel like you're, you're way beyond that. So I want you doing as high level exercise, as, again, as you can handle, as you can tolerate without big setbacks. And, right. and the good rule is if you move up that chain and do something that feels more challenging to you, um, do it a couple times before you try adding, going up the chain further. But basically let your body prove to you that has mastered that movement and it does it comfortably consistently two or three times before you try adding more. Um, and that could be either intensity, like how much weight you're doing or how fast you're running. I mean, these are all kinds of intensity, um, how much weight you're lifting, um, or it could be the number of repetitions you do, right? That's another way to increase intensity or it yep. could be how frequently you do things. So maybe I do, I start with this. Maybe I play tennis once a week. Now, just because I can play tennis once a week comfortably doesn't mean I can automatically play tennis five days a week. It doesn't mean my body's ready for that. That's a bigger dose. But maybe you go from once to twice a week and let your body adapt to that. Then I add a third day. So kind of stair-stepping and, and, and make sure your body is, is proving to you that it's cool with that amount of work before you start adding more. That's a good way. It, otherwise, you get you end up skipping ahead, and you may end up giving yourself an overuse injury or attempting yeah. something your body can't quite do yet, and then that means you're doing it in an unsafe way. So, I guess my only other question outside of that is uh, how how much should I worry in general that uh, you know that my bone is susceptible to a, to a rebreak? Um, uh, almost none. But before I say that, I'll ask you, when's the last time you saw your surgeon? That was at this point, two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. And what did he or she say as far as limitations for you? Did they give you any limitations? Um, I think the only limitation, I mean, he, so at that point I was, so I went into that appointment on crutches and I left walking. Hey. Um, and so that was, and, and, you know, I, I probably could have walked before that appointment, but I was just being, yeah. um, you know, conservative. Yeah. And he, he just said, take it, you know, take it at your own speed, feel it out. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm up to doing hikes in terms of the, it's, it's kind of frustrating because the most recent, I have all of the records for his readings on the, you know, like on the x-rays that they took two weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. And it looks like, I don't know, either autocorrect got to this one or he just made a bunch of typos. But I think he, he says uh, no evidence of loosening or lucency, um, anti-rejection maintenance planes, what appears to be complete bony healing, all planes of use. Fantastic. That's, that's yeah. exactly what we want to hear. Great. Yeah. So lucency, it was the lucency, the thing you were wondering about? Uh, well, I mean, just a number of, I mean, I, I don't really know what a lot of this means, but. Okay. So, so he said, go through that again and I'll just translate them for you real quick. Uh, so, um, evidence, uh, so yeah, it, this is the frustrating thing. So in the previous reading, which was a month before this, it said no evidence of loosening, loosening or lucency. And then in this one, it says evidence of loosening or lucency. I think he left out the word no. I think you're right. Because uh, I don't see why I would have gone from, you know, yeah, and especially those, because nothing happened. Two completely different things, by the way. So what he's, what he's talking about with loosening is the screws have backed out a bit or the okay. bracket come away from the bone. That's loosening. Loosency is when you crack a bone, uh, the bone looks really white. Loosency would be a dark, line through it which is mm. the evidence of the fracture that's what a fracture looks like on x-ray right lucency we don't want right um so i i agree with you i think he left out the word no <laughs> kind of a big thing to leave out it's a big thing it changes the meaning exactly opposite <laughs> but it's still if he told you hey stop using your crutches he wouldn't have said that and he wouldn't have said let pain be your guide if yeah. he thought the thing was that your bracket was coming off and you still had a fracture <laughs> So that's how I'm going to interpret that. Cool. Yeah. And then the other, I guess the only other thing I'm a little worried about, which I, I think your advice of sort of take it slow, take it easy covers 
is, you know, the a climbing harness wraps a leg loop around your leg right where my leg broke. Yep. Um, and, you know, you take balls into that harness and the leg loops, you know, tighten and apply pressure to your legs. Yeah. Fortunately, you know, we use dynamic ropes, so it is sort of a soft catch. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, uh, I just don't, don't, don't want to create an issue. Absolutely. Don't want to yank on that spot if it's still loose, right? Yeah. Two things I'll tell you there. Number one, bone heals in about six weeks. And you're more than that. Yeah. So we have, there's been plenty of time. Plus he x-rayed you. And he, I mean, I'm going to tell you that he meant to say yeah. that it healed, right? Um, and plus, you have the extra protection of the bracket still in there. Yeah. So, I mean, really, that left hip is probably stronger and more durable than the right one to, to that kind of force. Because it's not the original bone that you had all your life, plus a bunch of bracket, steel brackets and hardware. My enhancement. Your enhancement, yes. You're on your way to being the $6 million man. Or I guess exactly. The $6 billion man, I guess, would have to be these days. Um, and secondly, I'll say, just like we were talking about with reintroducing something else, if you, uh, you can do, you know, when you're harnessing up, you can sag back into your harness, see what it feels like, maybe try, you know, a low drop, you know, like where you don't even take up all the slack in the line and just kind of just get a feel for it, do it a couple times. That'll give you a feel for it. And the other thing too is, you know, you can hold on to your rope to take a little bit of the pressure off your harness as you bail. So that's how I would say that. I, I'm personally not worried at all. Yeah. The most you might have was a little temporary discomfort, but structurally, I think you're solid. Great. That's you're great solid. to hear. Yeah. So at this point, yeah, our, our objective, you and me, at this point, is just rebuilding uh, strength and flexibility. That's in conditioning. That's that's literally all. I'm not concerned about, um, you know, well, let's not break it again or something like that. Not at all. We're way we're way past that. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, my friend. Everything is in your inbox. Thank you so much. Yeah, those are. Uh, I, like I said, I I reached out because I was feeling uh, just a. Uh, limited i didn't you know i was doing i was doing what i had i was doing more and more and more of those side leg raises and i was just doing regular squats and i was thinking to myself i said i need some more varied options here to ensure that i get you know a holistic approach um, and a lot of the things that you gave me i'm pretty excited about so thank you awesome absolutely and and what you're describing is exactly what happens when when you you outgrow the necessary but simple and kind of frustratingly easy things. Yeah. Being like oh, this isn't doesn't feel like it's doing anything anymore. I feel like I need to be doing doing more. I, I want to end up here, and I'm still down here. Yeah, and I want to end up here quickly. Yes, you're on track, my friend. So uh, here's so so check in with me in one week. Okay. And be, depending on what you tell me, that'll determine which direction we go. So. I might, at some point, I'll have some upgraded exercises for you. That may not be in a week. It might be in two. Um, but that would only, we'd only need a 30-minute session. And I bet you that's all we need is two total sessions, and you'll be, you'll be off to the races. Great. Well, appreciate your time. And uh, I'll check in with you next week. Awesome, man. Oh, one quick other quick question. Do you mind if I use some of your x-ray images as part of the presentation? Not at all. Awesome, man. Awesome. Great job, my friend. Thank you. Keep me posted if you have questions and have a great weekend. You too. Appreciate the help. You bet.